Hey everyone, welcome back to FFG Live. My name is Evan, I'm joined here by Brooks and Max. And today, as you can see on the table in front of you, we have some very large ships, right? You might say they're huge. Huge ships, ships yeah. about to engage in an epic battle, as they say. Uh, so we are showing off the huge ships today uh, for X-Wing. So uh, these ships were part of the first edition, now making a triumphant return into the second edition. As you can see, we've got the huge ship conversion kit behind us. So you can use that to convert all of your huge ships if you played in the first edition. We're also re-releasing those, so you can get them that way as well. And we're playing a scenario from the epic Battles multiplayer expansion. Uh, tell us a little bit about the scenario and what's what's going on. What are we going to see on the table today? So we're playing. So we're playing a 400 point game. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the things about these scenarios is there's a fair amount of point flexibility in them. This sure. one is written for 300, but we decided you know what we want to get a little more on the table. Yep. And show you a little more. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to go 400, and most of them are pretty flexible like that. Um, so we are playing uh, Atmospheric Entry. Uh, mm -hmm. My plucky band of rebels are trying to deliver some key payloads. It's probably, uh, you know, like medical supplies or something. Yeah, rebels. of course. If it was Imperials, it would just be bombs. Yeah. <laughs> um, rebels wouldn't bomb someplace. <laughs> um, uh, to uh, a planet that is uh, blockaded by the Empire. So I have to try to uh, break through Brooks's yeah. Atmospheric Barricade. All right. So... Okay, so I, I see a question in the chat actually already. So uh, we're playing on three by three, obviously. That is something that is supported with the use of huge ships yes. in, in second edition. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about well, that. Well, so uh, the, something I don't think we've shown fans yet is yeah. the new huge ship movement tool, Ooh, which I'll place in, in the dice tray here. Uh, nice. You can see it is pretty similar to the old huge ship movement tool, uh, but the angle is at a 45 degree mm -hmm. rather than a 30. So your ships are going to be doing effectively the same banks as your fighters are doing. Mm -hmm. um, Frank Brooks, our other coworker, actually did quite a lot of graph paper drawing out to make sure this ruler gave as close to the same maneuvers as your normal movement template on a normal small ship as we could get. Mm -hmm. Can you tell that Frank used to be an engineer in a past life? <laughs> uh, so the huge ships are going to be much more maneuverable than they used to be, uh, and they're not going to have to circle the very edge of the board, although you still will need to be careful not to be too aggressive with them. Um, in case you fly off a couple rounds later. So this new tool basically kind of allows the huge ships to effectively play on this smaller yes. play area. And uh, that combines with the new huge ship base, which I will also put yeah, above the dice tray. Yeah, let's see if we can get a... Is um, that in frame? Can we see that, the base there? No, you have to put it all the way in. Yeah, okay. like, uh, there we go. like that maybe? Okay. Down a little more. Oh. There we go. There we go, got it. Okay. So uh, the base, you'll notice, is all one piece and has receptors for both the larger and smaller huge ships. Mm -hmm. And then the movement tool plugs in underneath along oh, this guideline cool. here, locks up to the front, and then your ship executes nice. that bank. Nice. Look at that, so, engineering at work. Yes. And in addition, um, the huge ship templates all have the same arcs, the same uh, midpoint lines as standard bases. So huge ships are going to be using all the same rules. They're going to interact with all the same abilities as your small, medium, large ships. All right, well, we're about to see that in action on the table. Uh, is this uh, this movement tool then, so that comes in the huge ship conversion kit and then all of the re-released yes. ships as well? And it's acrylic, just like this one, or plastic, it's, I mean? It's plastic, yeah. just yeah. like the premium yep. movement tools. Perfect, yes. and very it goes cool. very nicely with them. Yes, and the yeah. conversion kit gives you two copies because it gives you two huge ah, ship bases. All right, what do you know? Now, the other thing we're going to show off today is wings. Yeah. Uh, so we've got our we've got our huge ships, but we've also got some wings. So we wanted to make sure we got that into the test. So here, I'll set out one of the wings I've got in the area uh, so that we can show that off. I yeah. won't pull all their upgrades over because that would take you a minute. Flip it the other way so we can read it. Oh, sorry. All right. So the wing leader is Yvonne Verlaine, mm -hmm. uh, leading a pair of Gray Squadron bombers, uh, who are her flanks. Uh, and so, as you can see, the wing ID card replaces uh, the need for an ID token. Yep. Uh, and when the ship splits from the wing, which is the thing they can do, they can potentially leave the wing. They can either get forced out if they can't fit, mm -hmm. or uh, they can leave if they just want to go do something else. Yeah. Um, uh, you push the ID down, and then it's your ID, and they're out of the wing. So oh, that's, that's how you cool. get in and out. So yep. nice, simple system for that. Saves a piece of punch board. 
Uh, and then we have some IDs that match those. So this is the red group, but we also have a uh, blue and yellow group. Yep, and, and I have a blue group in play. Black and white group, great. All right, so you need blue group. I have the cards already. Oh, you do? All right, great. While you're kind of sorting that stuff out, how about uh, some people are eager to see some of the huge ship dials uh, and what those look like. Yeah. We've got those well, here. Let's show you a huge ship dial. Just pull this stuff out of here. So here we've got the CR90 Corellian Corvette dial. All right. So that's the CR91 right there. And there is the Gazanti Cruiser. There you have it. That Tantic looks a little bit more maneuverable. Has a, has a couple more options. Yeah, so uh, huge ships are, are definitely, I mean, they are still lumbering beasts yeah. um, compared, to, uh, compared to fighters. But uh, they've got a little more, uh, a little more maneuverability now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, you'll notice no longer do they have energy uh, pips next to their maneuvers. Right, right. Um, so the, that system has been streamlined a bit. They do still have and use energy. Mm -hmm. um, which is tracked on the resource tracker, which... Do we have that around oh, somewhere? Is that in the conversion kit? In, yes, it's part it's the of the kit. huge ship conversion uh, kit. Right. Yes. You are. That's a series of dials. Uh, and let's just put one of those together for you just to show off how that works. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds good to me. Uh, well, you're kind of looking at that right there. Ah. All right. Uh, could you explain to us a little bit about how the zero speed bank works? So, uh, the zero speed banks, uh, yeah. I will put the huge ship movement tool back into yeah. the. Or maybe you just want to do it on the table. Uh, well, so I can actually represent this oh, with a okay. movement tool in the dice tray. So, sure. we have more dark cameras in the dice tray. Mm -hmm. So, the ship will be plugged into the movement tool here, essentially. This is the ship's base. Sure. Uh, and then when the ship does a bank, it will just bank to that oh, I see, to tool that, to that zero instead right of to here, here, here. Yep, yep. Um, so this is going to overlap the image a little bit. I'll do it this way. Mm -hmm. But a zero speed bank. You can do it on the actual star field. Okay. Do you have a top down there? Yep. All right. So here is a zero speed bank. Just pivoting like that. Yep. A one-speed bank, a two-speed bank, and a three-speed bank. Very nice. I really love the way it, it like, like just that. hooks in like that. That's very cool. All right. Uh, we got those energy dials yeah. ready here to show to people. Yes. So do we have a set of plastic connectors? They should be in the box. They'll be in the box. I have the damage deck, meanwhile. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll this I'll show is that off. the huge ship damage Ooh. deck back. Uh, it's a little spicy, a little interesting. Yeah. Um, and then here are a variety of the damage cards. Uh, you can see these damage cards have two halves. Um, the bottom part is the standard effect that applies um, much like your standard damage cards do. Um, some of them resolve an effect and then the card repairs. Mm -hmm. Other effects remain in play. Mm -hmm. However, uh, they also have a precision shot uh, effect, which is if you are in a specific arc of the target ship, it applies some additional effect. So for, if you are attacking a huge ship from directly ahead, you have a better chance of hitting its bridge, causing stress or jam tokens. Yeah. If you're attacking it from the sides, you're more likely to hit its weapons. If you're attacking it from the rear, you're more li likely to hit its engines. Uh, as you can see here, turret disabled mm -hmm. on some of these damage cards. And you'll note these are different damage cards with the same precision effect. And then some other damage cards have different precision effects, right. controls disrupted. Absolutely. So there are okay. only a couple of precision effects, but there right. are a whole number of damage cards that interact with them differently. That's very cool. Um, so then people asking about red and blue maneuvers for huge ships, do they just stress as normal ships? Yes, so uh, huge ships can gain stress, um, but bef when they would gain a stress token, if they have any energy, it costs them an energy instead. So they're only going to get stressed once all of their energy gets depleted. Sure. This is actually how a lot of different negative tokens interact with huge ships, mm -hmm. is if the 
Negative token uh, ion, for example, will also cancel out with energy. Right. Um, and only if there's ion tokens left over can the huge ship get ionized. Perfect. It'll take a lot of ion tokens to ionize a huge ship, and it's not going to stay that way very long. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, Max just went to go and get something. Let's see, what have we not shown off yet in terms of... Uh, I think you had a couple upgrade cards from uh, from the conversion kit that you want to show people. Uh, so I have, I'll, I'll show my huge ship here. Yeah, let's um, see that. So I have a Gazanti, a, a fairly modest huge ship, uh, only 11 hull and 5 shields. Um, but the shields do recharge each turn. I get one shield back just like I get energy back. Yeah. Um, and I have equipped it pretty modestly with just the Requiem title and the targeting battery upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, but my plan is to take advantage of the docking clamps to dock several of my small ships to yeah. the Gazanti, use the targeting battery to attack at very long range, you know, it's range two to five, mm -hmm. um, attack, acquire a target lock, and then when I deploy the docked ships, those ships can acquire a lock on the ship I have locked. Nice. Um, and I brought four Thai bombers, all carrying missiles and torpedoes, Mm -hmm. who will hopefully do a lot of damage. So, one second here. So, so this turret out, yeah. then, uh, as you were kind of saying with the precision shot, that can be destroyed, right? Or, or disabled. It can uh, be knocked offline. Yeah, how does so, that work? So, uh, when... Uh, we'll actually get that damage effect out. Yeah. When a huge ship suffers the turret disabled precision shot, yep. uh, the attacker chooses one of your hardpoint upgrades that is offline that is not offline, rather, mm -hmm. flip this card. So I'll take the targeting battery, flip it over. Oh, cool. It's now offline. All of our hard points have two sides, uh, mm -hmm. a side with a weapon attack, and the side you have to use to repair it. Sure. Uh, and they also all have art of that weapon damaged or destroyed. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. That has turned out very nice. I'm very happy with that. So you can spend the spend energy, basically, yep, to, to, to repair it. To repair it and bring yep. it back online. And then it will flip the card. The, the, the repair is a technical term we use for damage cards. Right. It just flips the card, but that right. is the thematic effect yes. of yes. spending the Thematically, it is repaired uh, or brought back online. Um, so okay. this is how we've captured the feel from the first edition huge ships of all of their different damage cards, causing them to flip or discard yeah. different weapons, mm -hmm. uh, but standardizing it with the new rules and templates so that we have abilities that can interact with them normally. A question from Armando Arviso. Uh, does ion affect turret functionality? Um, ion tokens will cancel out with energy tokens, so it will put some drain on your power mm -hmm. if you are trying to attack with a number of weapons. Yeah. Um, so you notice uh, uh, my Gazanti has three energy. It recovers one each turn. Mm -hmm. um, and when I attack with the targeting battery, I have to spend an energy token to do that attack. Uh, if I just attack with my normal primary weapon, I have a normal front dark primary weapon, Right. that right. will work normally. All right, very we'll good. We'll need those out, Ryan. Uh, all right, so oh, I think we are probably just about ready to start. Um, well, let's show off the dial. Yeah, yeah let's, let's, see that, let's see that tracker. energy dial. So here's the resource tracker. It tracks shields and energy. Oh, nice. So it does it does both of them for the huge ship then. Yes. Uh, now, some people are wondering why does it go to double digits? There have been a lot of theories about this. Front half, back half power. These are interesting ideas. The truth is it is just double digits. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for this is because there are some combinations that can get you to double digits. Yeah. Uh, I don't need that, Ryan. Yeah, some people and are. Yes. see that tainted four So five. So there is the Alderanian Guard. Uh, that is our Rebel uh, CR90. There's, of course, a Republic one as well. Looks pretty similar. Yep. yep. Um, but it has a cool new art piece. Um, uh, and it's, of course, available to the Republic. Yes. So we were able to get all the factions in immediately with this. Naturally. naturally. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, so that has those. Uh, it's got our uh, seven shields, seven energy, and two recurring. So it's going to mm -hmm. get two of those back during the end phase each round. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Um, this is going to be a big challenge for me to take down. Yes, I'm hoping that my fortress will be able to uh, parade across successfully mm -hmm. without burning up in the atmosphere. All right. Well, we'll uh, lofty goal. 
we will get into exactly how the scenario works in just a second. Uh, I am seeing a lot of questions in the chat about Destiny and the covert mission set. Uh, so I'm just going to address that real quick sure. and karate right chop that, that right out of your hand yeah. uh, and get that out of the way before we keep going. So obviously this is an X-Wing stream. We're not going to focus too much on Destiny. Uh, as we mentioned in the AMA, the covert mission set has been delayed to the first quarter of 2020. Uh, Andrew mentioned in that stream that there was an article upcoming. Uh, that He misspoke on that, actually. So th there isn't an article, uh, and that is all the information we have to share on Destiny at this point. So sorry uh, about that, and uh, back to X-Wing. So uh, about the scenario, what's, uh, what's going on with this? All right, so we are playing the atmospheric entry scenario from the Epic Battles. Uh, pack and Max, this was a bit of your baby. Yeah, this is. So if you want to, you can show yeah, it let's, off. Let's, you can read off of the first. Sure. Yeah. So uh, for this scenario, uh, space forces mobilized to intercept a planetary strike, sparking an upper atmosphere battle. Combatants must be wary uh, on their approach to the planet's gravity well, or risk burning up in the atmosphere. So in this scenario, I've got a number of. VIP or uh, payload counters, um, which are essentially important uh, things. I've got six of them, and these are the key medical supplies I'm delivering to the uh, Wookies on this planet. Yeah, exactly. Or for sure. Um, those Wookies. Um, Wookies for sure. Uh, and uh, I am going to distribute these among my ships. I can give up to two to any uh, standard ship, which is a non huge ship, uh -huh. and up to four to a huge ship. So mm -hmm. I have to decide do I want to spread them out? Do I want to put my eggs in one basket? And Brooks will know where I'm putting them. Um, but I don't put them down until after I put my ships down. So I'll get to see the setup and then decide where they are. Okay. And you have six that you're I have six distribute? of these, yes. Okay. Uh, the scenario tells us that we're going to put down six obstacles. So we mm -hmm. get to pick any six obstacles. We've chosen a, mm -hmm. select, a good selection in advance. Um, and then we're going to uh, set up a play area um, that designates uh, one side as the direction of the planet. Um, so, so yeah, where's, where's this planet that you're flying towards? Yes. So, so it should be coming down towards Devin here. This that corner, way we're coming right? towards my this corner. Lower right sure. Corner. There it is. Okay. All right. So that means that out at range three of there, and we don't need to mark this off, um, but we do need to know it mm -hmm. uh, as we approach. Yeah. Um, uh, out three of there, uh, you start to get the effects of the atmosphere. So here mm -hmm. is just a rough visual for the fans of the atmosphere. I see. So that's where kind of uh, yeah, the extending all the way across the atmosphere is going to start to take place. And how does that work? So the way that works is um, if you're flying carefully, you'll be OK. Um, you know, Star Wars ships have the ability to get through atmosphere. We know that. We see it all the time. Right. Um, uh, but if you try to dive straight in, you risk burning up. So mm. if the atmosphere is in your front arc at the end of the round, you can't stress. If you are already stressed, you take damage instead. Sure. So is that, does that effect only take place if you are within yes. these bounds? OK, so if you're in here and you're pointing towards the atmosphere, you're fine. And if you're flying up, you're fine. OK, if you're flying so, out of the atmosphere. So if you're flying out of the atmosphere, you're fine. Right. If you're flying sideways, you're fine, because you're skimming along the atmosphere at a gentle sure. angle. But if you're like coming, coming in too hot. But if you're coming right. in like this, yeah. you're going to start burning. Interesting. Now, the shortest route is a straight line yeah. towards the edge. It's so true. that's a risk you could be willing to take. Uh, you know, I'm My Imperial forces would certainly be willing to take. You know, I was going to ask, since you know you could load up four of those payload things onto your Tantive IV, uh, could the, can the Imperials like really realistically stop that before you just like slam it straight down? Well, so uh, here's the thing. The One, planet. they definitely can. These are yeah. tough, but they are far from invincible. Sure. Um, but two, and more importantly, if they kill everything else of mine, mm -hmm. so for our scoring, we don't just score based on those uh, payloads. Yeah. The payloads are worth a certain number of points, but we're also counting our losses. Mm -hmm. um, so I might get a Pyrrhic victory um, by getting the payloads through, but you sure. know, Brooks could still win the game. Um, it would be very hard for Brooks to win the game if I got all the payloads through, but it is technically yeah. possible, I think, if it were a really fringe build. I don't think it's possible with my build. If you didn't, if you destroyed almost nothing yeah. of mine, yes. Yes. I don't, but yeah, so you otherwise it would be difficult. How much are you going to focus on the objective? How much are you going to focus on destroying your enemy? They can both win you the game, but you know the objective is usually pretty points efficient in most of these. And some of them, the objective is the only thing that scores. Um, so sometimes you really do just need to focus on that. But for this one, you want to you want to do this without throwing away too many lives, or at least too many lives you care about, which is why your Tie Fighters are. Oh yeah, I have the Seventh <laughs> Sister leading a wing of Tie Fighters here. Oh, um, so cool. 
And then so this is the, the number first I've of seen your list, bombers. So this is exciting. Yeah, we probably don't have to show off every single ship no. since there's but a just, ton of cards. But, but let's uh, show the wing later. Yeah. So uh, the seventh sister is leading the wing, mm -hmm. uh, using agents of the empire to lead the wing of ships not of the same type. So she has four Tie Fighters with her. Uh, and because there are five ships total in the wing, they'll be deployed in this formation on the reference card for the wing leader. And then each other ship's reference card, so here is the right flank TIE fighter, mm -hmm. uh, tells them what position they'll take up in that formation. Perfect. All right. So let's, uh, are we to deployment or putting obstacles on? Do you have uh, any more kind of cards in your lists that you really want to highlight for everyone? I think it'll all become apparent as it'll we go all, on. Yeah, I'll, I'll I think it'll be clear. more entertaining to reveal some of the plans we have. Um, because uh, while we know what ships each other has, yep. we haven't paid too much attention to specifically what upgrades there are. Uh, and I think it'll be more entertaining this way. Yeah, I yep. think so too. Yeah, so just for ships, obviously I've got the uh, CR90. Mm -hmm. I've got a sheath of P with some familiar faces on it. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I've got three Y wings, uh -huh. uh, Yvonne and two wingmates, mm -hmm. and two valiant members of Phoenix Squadron who always have such a good time. Yeah, two yes. little A wings. <laughs> so I have an Outer Rim Garrison uh, controlling my Gazanti Cruiser. That's just mm -hmm. the Imperial pilot for the Gazanti Cruiser. I have the Seventh Sister leading a wing of four Obsidian Squadron pilots, all in Thai LN fighters. Nice. And I have Death Fighter, Death Fire, and three members of Scimitar Squadron in Thai bombers. Mm -hmm. And Fifth Brother has hitched a ride with Death Fire. Uh, so I've got the Seventh Sister, Fifth Brother here to stop the rebels and okay. hunt down nice. any nice. familiar faces they might have brought along. All right. Well, good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad this is such a thematic matchup. All right, well, let's get started. So, to start things off, uh, we determine the deployment areas. Uh, so in this case, we really just have one point we want to mark off. Uh, our corner tool here. Okay, so that, it looks right. like there's a little bit confusion about how the atmosphere works. So let's just, let's just run through that real quick again. Absolutely, uh, so there's this dangerous descent rule. Right. Uh, and that pretty much covers it. So basically, this this edge here that uh, that we're measuring out right now um, is the area of the atmosphere, right? Yep. So if let, let's There's let's get more. an example out here. Let's ha let's have a ship. Uh, all right. So I'm out here. I am pointing directly towards the atmosphere, uh, but I'm not within its bounds. What what happens to this ship? Uh, nothing. nothing. You're still in space. Okay. You're fine. Perfect. I am, let's say I'm right here, I'm, I'm now in the atmosphere, and I'm flying out away from it. In this case, I'm also totally fine, right? Yeah, you're totally fine. You're flying okay. out of the atmosphere, you're not risking. So if I'm, I'm kind of like going like this along the atmosphere, so it's in my front arc, it's not my bullseye arc. Yeah, so if it's in your front arc, you are potentially picking up some stress. Right. Um, but you can clear it next round. Yep, yep, you can clear it by doing blue maneuvers. So as long as you're flying carefully, you should be fine. Yep, okay. Uh, and then if I'm flying like something like this, so the, this board edge is in my bullseye arc. Then, you know, you're playing a risky game. Do then you for, have stress? Did you clear it this round? Uh, let's say I didn't. Uh, then you're going to take a damage. A critical damage, right? Yeah, for each stress. a critical damage, yeah. So it's a critical damage per stress. So if something It's a good with, thing you have shields. Yeah. There we go. So that, And that's the bullseye arc that is Don't whether or not you're going to take damage. So front arc is taking stress, bullseye arc taking damage. Yes. And all, these effects only apply if you're within this yes. radius here. Okay. Perfect. Uh, hopefully that answers everyone's questions. If you have more questions, shoot them in the chat, and I will ask them to these guys. So I got first player token here. You do. I'm just going to flip. You call the color of the X-Wing. Okay. Black or white. All right. Uh, go for it. Black. No such luck. Would you like to be first or second player? <laughs> oh, I was calling the X-Wing color. I'm good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, that worked out for me then. Uh, um, I'm all initiative two, except for my huge ship, which is initiative seven. Let's see. Um, oh, and Seventh Sister is initiative four. So your setup, Max, is this quadrant of the board up here? Yep. Yes. Yep. So that's my setup area. And I'll be able to set up along both of these edges out to range two. Put, yes. Put that in the tray, please. Um, yes. So hmm, I think I will... 
This is a tough call. I think I will move second. Okay. Because you have that sheath of peed also at initiative two. Yes. All right, so let's place these obstacles real quick. Yeah. Uh, so I'll get to place the first one. I will put this asteroid right in the middle of your path to Ooh, safety. I don't like that. All right. <laughs> so well, the rest big of them. fat asteroid right there. Okay, well I think I will put this gas cloud right in where I think you're going to be attacking me. And it has to be outside your deployment area. There we go. Okay. Uh, I will put, again, uh, some debris fields uh, on the easiest, shortest path for you. Well, I do have to get to that corner, so equally short. Um, let's do this guy right here. Oh, well, if you're going to make life harder for yourself, then <laughs> I will continue to expand this little V-shape. Uh, this debris is probably falling into the atmosphere. Yeah, previous battle. And let's do this guy out here. Oh, no, those were your scouting elements. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that yikes. Sense. Yeah, I mean, that does look like there's like a... Some kind of yeah, there's an X-wing in there. There's, there. there's also there. something Imperial, but that's to be expected. They delivered important news about the Wookiees. All right. All right. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> All right. Well, so we start with placement. Uh, huge ships uh, are going to go down. First, I'm initiative I seven. You're initiative yep. eight. So let's try to suck it down here. All right. So I will commit my outer rim garrison. Uh, since I don't want, with my big base and my wide arc, I don't want to be looking too much at an angle into so, the sun. I believe huge shifts, but, and I will need to check this, but I do believe huge shifts actually go down in... Um, uh, Engagement in, order? Uh, 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 well, reverse uh, of a normal initiative. So mine will go down first, because the warships okay. are heavier. Um, so I'm going to put this thing right... Yeah, I'm going to do... Okay, well, in that case... I don't want to get too close to you with my Gazanti, but I do want to get in range. So I'm going to mm -hmm. place here, and there's not a lot of room. Yeah, does your base I have to be that to entirely myself. within the uh, within it does the deployment not. zone? Okay. Like a huge or like a large ship placing in a standard deployment area. Yeah, as long as you're touching the board edge, you can be outside. Okay. All right. And I will uh, note that all four of my tie bombers are in fact loaded on my Gazanti here. Oh, that's exciting. That. Okay. So uh, I some will people... put them here for now. They'll look pretty, but they can't actually attach just because of the way it's set up. So some people asking about the map's size. So we're, we're playing a scenario, uh, three by three, and it does support huge ships, especially with the new redesigned huge ship maneuver tool, which we'll see in action in a little bit here. But there are scenarios in Epic Battles that are played on a larger yes. play area. Yeah, right? there are quite a few uh, yes. six by three scenarios. Perfect. Well, you know, we know that not all play areas have a good space. Um, uh, so it's not always, uh, you know, easy to find a 6x3 space. I right. wanted to make sure that there are lots of options for lots of different games. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I know that, you know, in my apartment, I, I certainly have trouble fitting a 6x3. I kind of have to go to the game store for that. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. I would have to play on the floor. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> which I have done. Yeah, why not? All right, uh, my A-Wings. Your A-Wings. Okay, well, these A-Wings have got selfless, so I think they're going to go be selfless over... Uh, very, very thematic. Especially for Phoenix Squadron. Yes. Uh, okay. And then what is Yvonne Verlaine's initiative? Yvonne's is three. Okay. So her wing will drop at the same time yes. as her. Yes. So Seventh Sister's initiative is four. Oh, so all I'm right. So I'm going to bring in all the rest of my TIE fighters after you've deployed the rest of your ships. Oh, goody. All right. Well, then you'll get to see my strategy. So I've got my two next. Mm -hmm. um, so my sheep of feed, uh, I think it will tuck in. Right. The, so the huge ships uh, bonus attacks uh, are they limited or are they unlimited? Can they shoot with like every gun they have, or is a it... huge ship can make any number of bonus attacks in a round. Now it will eventually run out of energy with which to make bonus attacks. Right. But yes, you can make as many as you want. If you have cluster missiles, you can fire off those cluster missiles at as many targets as you want until you're out of missiles. 
I didn't take cluster missiles, but yeah, yeah. the uh, <laughs> the ordnance attacks enabled by the ordnance tubes hardpoint upgrade do work slightly differently. Those don't cost energy to use; you just mm -hmm. firing them all off. You use a different firing arc than normal for those missiles, mm -hmm. um, but you can spend energy to reload additional missiles and to not suffer disarm from using that. Mm -hmm. uh, that way, the huge ship doesn't have to completely sit out of the game for a round or two to reload its weapons. All right, and I'm going to drop Yvonne for land over here, and then where's that epic battles kit? Okay. So I got, uh, oh, I got the wing tool out oh, already, right. so you can just use that. I'll quickly use this, and I think I'm going to have to put it a little further over to fit the wing in. As you're uh, placing there, uh, talk to me about the range on the huge ships' uh, weapons. What does that look like? So uh, huge ships, uh, this is a difference from first edition. Mm -hmm. uh, all huge ships are going to have a default primary weapon value. Uh, it's usually two or three. Uh, it's mm -hmm. going to have a different arc depending on the ship. Right. So most of the ships have a default front arc. A couple have a default full front arc, 180 degrees. Uh, the CR-90, of course, has uh, left and right arcs mm -hmm. at a whopping four because of its heavier armament. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. And um, it has a ship ability that lets it attack at range one to four instead of only range one to three. Sure, sure. Now, certain uh, hard points let you attack at longer ranges. Yeah. This so is my targeting battery can attack from two to five oh, in yeah. whatever turret arc I have. That's pretty sweet. All right. All right. So that's all my stuff. Where are you going? Okay, well, um, I think your Y wings are going to be the more significant threat. So I'm going to deploy Seventh Sister over here. Uh, I suppose she'll have to creep back a bit so her wing all fits in uh, to there. And then I will deploy the wing around her. Mm -hmm. So here is her right flank and right support. And left flank and left support. Nice. There we go. Cool. All right. Okay. That's it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So then we are ready right. to set the dice. Uh, oh, wait, uh, you need wait, wait. To There's one more important thing to do. I need to assign these out. Ah, yes. All I right. need to know what ships I have to destroy. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I'm going to give. So I've got six of these to put out. I'm going to put. Three of them on the. I'm gonna put these on the cards actually because I'd be knocking these over all the time otherwise. But sure. Three of them are gonna be on the Alderanian guard. Yep. Um, you know, big cargo holds. Uh, I'm going to put uh, one of them on Yvonne Berlain. Mm -hmm. And let's see. As you're making your choice, uh, how does overlapping uh, smaller ships work for huge ships? Uh, not so well for the small ships. <laughs> it's going to be rough. It's not going to be as bad as it was in first edition. Sure. Um, so instead of being completely destroyed, yeah. <laughs> uh, you will take some damage, and then you will be placed touching part of the huge ship um, of the huge ship player's choice. So mm -hmm. you still really do not want to get run over because it'll bump you into some unfortunate place where you're probably in several firing arcs. Actually, so the you get to place it, your ship. Okay. It's, it has to be in the rear arc, though. But then the huge ship player gets to opt whether they want to turn the ship 90 or Right, that's degrees. what it is. Oh, uh, okay. This one evolves a lot in development, um, and uh, for good reason, because it was a very tricky mechanic to find the right place of. It's odd. You'd think it would be easy to replace just, like, you're destroyed with something else. But actually, it took a lot of fine-tuning to find the exact right, you know, like, amount of penalty for getting run over. Right. If huge ships hit each other... Um, they both just blow they, up instantly. Well, no, but <laughs> it can feel that way sometimes, to be sure. You'll take a lot of damage. If it happens, I'm going to try very hard for it to not happen. Okay. It's my, it's not oh, <laughs> just geez, ram. No. Um, ram so speed. now uh, you'll see the advantage of some of the systems we've put in place for Epic, because here are all the dials I would normally have to set <laughs> uh, if this was the first round of a first edition game of Epic. That's an insane uh, Except dials. my TIE Bombers are all docked to the Gazanti, and my TIE Fighters are all on the wing. So yeah. all I need So you place two dials. The dial for my Gazanti carrying my TIE Bombers, and the dial for Seventh Sister leading the wing of TIE Fighters. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. And these can all just sit over here. <laughs> yeah, and I've got this on five dials as well, or so five dials. So um, uh, 
It is a pretty, pretty light dial load, which does not mean that it's a simple game, but it is much simpler than it was in first edition, to be sure. That package just busted. Oh, yeah. That's that, not going to work. Guys. <laughs> I wanted to bring back the uh, the classic. The classic, like, white wing that's like, Wing. Well, not that part. Not classic, <laughs> but that paint scheme. Yeah, exactly. It's nice exactly. to differentiate the wing leader and wing mates. Yeah, absolutely. All right. What am I going to do about this mess? These Wookiees need these supplies. Well, so lots of people are very, very excited for this. I'm seeing in the chat and just want to communicate well, good. with you guys. Be. Yeah. Some people saying, like, I'm never going to play standard X-Wing again. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was uh, quite pleased to be able to get seven generic fighters plus two characters and then a huge ship. They're, mm -hmm. they're pretty lightly equipped um, to fit into 400 points. But it's going to be a lot of fun. And I don't have to set many dials for the first couple rounds. Yeah. I'm very pleased about That's that. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> Should we tell them uh, where the idea for the wings came from, Max? Oh, uh, you seem like you want to tell the story. I, 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 it's quite <laughs> interesting. Um, our playtesters actually came up with this idea because they wanted uh, to not set quite as many dials in playtesting. Um, and so Max was lead on the project by that point, but we had to play around with it a bit, um, tried to tweak the rules. Uh, so that you could move the ships in formation without uh, getting too much of an extra advantage out of them. So the idea uh, that was originally proposed was actually movement trays. That's the really interesting part. Yikes. Mm. Yeah, That's we, a frightening thought. We, that would be... we didn't want to do that because it was yeah. just a little bit too, uh, a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. uh, but we liked the, the concept of mm -hmm. moving many ships a little And dial. using uh, effectively a one straight tool to space out all of your ships uh, produces very much the same effect. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually, like there are a number of different ways ships can leave or enter formations. Um, there are a number of different effects in the game we had to consider. Uh, by limiting most wings to all ships of the same type, uh, there are very specific exceptions. So Agent of the Empire allows me to bring TIE fighters alongside a TIE advanced or a TIE advanced prototype. Um, that is giving the TIE Fighters some extra maneuverability. The Seventh Sister can move and boost, and then the TIE Fighters all follow as if they had done the same. Mm -hmm. TIE Fighters don't normally have boost, but they are also only TIE Fighters. They're still pretty maneuverable, and they're not that powerful. Uh, what would be frightening, for example, and we didn't want to allow in an unrestricted way, was you to have some maneuverable ship letting all of your heavy hitters Making them much more. Miserable. I was gonna say, like a Tie Phantom yeah. carrying a bunch of, uh, uh, I don't know, Punishers. Uh, Punishers. If we around. just want to go up to yeah. eleven. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. I am ready. Let's go. So. All right. Uh, so. Initiative one. Yes. So uh, you'll notice the uh, the huge ships have very high initiative now. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to why that doesn't mean they shoot first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, we'll start out with these A wings. So these A wings are doing two turns. And I have all the tokens over here. Oh, wonderful. That is perfect. I will need some tokens. Uh, question from Fallen Angel 707. What's the average point cost of huge ships? Because I would like to have two huge ships in a scenario. Uh, there are certainly scenarios that accommodate that. Um, uh, and strictly speaking, there aren't any hard limits on how many huge ships you can have. Right. Um, we do have some recommendations um, yeah. that we're going to add, that we're going to make available. But um, but there aren't any hard limits. You could run exclusively huge ships if you wanted. With that said, I think the game is more fun and balanced if it's a mix. Sure. What's well, like the average value of a huge ship? Is uh, the average value. It really you depends want the on what ship you're using. Or mode. So uh, <laughs> this Gazanti cruiser is 60 points before upgrades. Uh, that's comparable to a character flying a large light freighter like the mm -hmm. YT-1300 or the YT-2400 or VT-49 Decimator. It's actually a little cheaper than some of the highest end I mean, characters. Yeah, absolutely. Um, sure, go ahead, Max. But there is quite a lot of upgrade options. I've only equipped two upgrades. I could have mm -hmm. equipped as many as eight. A number of them are fairly expensive because they are weapons. Right, 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 right. Um, so that is going to... Uh, allow me to spend my points on other things. Uh, mm -hmm. However, the, the, the fighting huge ships uh, can be 
you could make a ship in excess of 200 points. You could also mm -hmm. get a budget in, in the 100 to 150 point range. Um, sure. I'm going to barrel roll. How much is your CR90 coming in at max? Uh, my CR90 uh, before um, upgrades is 146 points. All right. Yeah, let's, let's throw oh, those yeah, dials sure. on the board so everyone knows right. what's okay. what. So your initiative ones. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and then your initiative two. And then the Sheikapede is doing a three straight. Uh, a question from Dennis Daniels. Will we be able to use the wing tool and upgrades in standard 200 point tournaments? No. no. There you go. Um, uh, it's certainly something that people have talked about, um, mm -hmm. but ultimately. It's a little bit of an abstraction to play a slightly different game. Obviously, yeah. we we feel that Epic Battles really does feel like X-Wing, but it definitely feels like, you know, X-Wing with some new angles on it that are a little different than the, you know, like uh, the 206 or, you know, 206 everyone is used to. Yeah. Um, and wings are a sort of, we wanted them to be a really unique thing for it. Um, the upshot of that, though, is that they do function in a way we wouldn't want in the main game. Right. Yeah. Um, for example, this wing is completely unupgraded, except mm -hmm. for Agent of the Empire and Seventh Sister, um, and is, other than her, all generics, and it is still 150 points. I'm gonna throw um, I would not want you to be able to move your entire fleet in a standard game mm -hmm. with just one dial all as a block. Right. Now, this formation will also very quickly break up as soon as the fighting actually starts. Right. Uh, if I collide with any of Max's ships yep. or if any of my ships get stressed and I try to do a maneuver that's too difficult for them to fall out of the formation. All right. Uh, initiative three. I believe it's all my stuff, yeah. yeah. It's kind of mine all the way down, isn't it? The, the Inquisitors have got the jump on you today. They do. All right, I'm doing a three bank on mm -hmm. this Y-Wang. Yes. And here we would see that wing tool in action. Yeah. Oh, and I'll show you a trick if you don't want to reach across the table for a wing tool as well. Uh, which is, do we have oh, these look, smaller one tools tool. all the way over there? Uh, do we have not these smaller ones? Punched out. No. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Right. Never mind. Never mind. No trick. No trick today. While you are moving, I will get it out. Yeah. Actually. yeah. If you wouldn't mind, that'd be great. The uh, punch board. Oh, the punch is over there. Yeah. yeah. All right. So strictly, each of these is doing its full circuit of things. They. Move up. They behave as though they executed a maneuver. The maneuver they behave as though they executed is this three bank. So I'm guessing you're gonna focus this. Um, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go for a lock. Sure. I think I can get you here. Oh, I can't. Nope. All right, I'm locking a rock. So you have locked some. Uh, well, I will grab focus with the other two because those were definitely not. Asteroid get. or debris field in the play those area. Are here are yeah. some of our other wing tools. Mm -hmm. There's a small one. So you can have those over there. Wonderful. I'll keep these over here. And I'll pass you back. Okay, because I'm going to need that for my big wing. Uh, so the seventh sister is doing a three-speed right bank. So she's going to execute that. Mm -hmm. And she is flying through the gas cloud, so she's going to lose her action. But she could have boosted before the wing came up to join her. Mm -hmm. um, and then the rest of the wing will come up into formation. And if you're wondering how those TIE Fighters uh, keep up with her, the answer is that they know better than to fall behind. <laughs> so, that, so that is interesting then. So you could have a, uh, by having a wing leader of a different ship type, you kind of unlock those types of maneuvers for every other ship exactly. in the wing. Because they're already not exactly doing real maneuvers in the game as it is. They're sort of right. doing these abstracted maneuvers. And again, part of the reason we felt comfortable with that is because it's still Precise and predictable. I mm -hmm. know where Brooks's ships are going to end up, yep. mm -hmm. but I and don't know. But but I know that some of their final positions wouldn't be places they could reach with a tool. Yeah. Right. But I, there's, st I've still committed to them uh, ahead of time. The only way I could get them out of formation is to like mm -hmm. spend coordinate actions to coordinate them before they actually move, and then they would lose all the benefits of flying in formation. Yes. Um, they'd be moving at their own initiative, etc. So the rest of my fighters have focused. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know if I'm going to get many shots on you. Uh, not. And then we'll go up to our huge ships. Yeah. So my Gazanti is just going a pleasant one straight forward. Oh, how pleasant. So for a straight move here, I'm going to line up uh, the ship with 
the uh, the edge of the base with the tool mm -hmm. and just slide forward the distance of Ooh, one. That was some rocket surgery. You went right past very, that rock. Very wow. carefully avoiding that rock. Yeah. Um, one thing uh, that you might have noticed the eagle-eyed amongst you mm -hmm. is that huge ships have this little 2x above their action bar. So I get to take two actions during my activation phase. They will, they will be two different actions, but it is still two actions. That's pretty sweet. Um, my turret arc is already pointing to my left arc, so I'm going to leave it there. Mm -hmm. I am going to focus. And since I don't think the TIE Fighter formation is going to be involved in any combat yet, but I might be taking some shots. I am going to reinforce my front as well. Ooh. So question from Cheeky Leg about wings. Uh, what about weird types of boosts or barrel rolls, such as Echo, Star Viper, Daredevil, etc.? If only the wing leader has access to it, does the rest of the wing still have the ability to do those things? Yes, so I mean, they don't really have the ability to do anything. The way right. a wing works They just is, follow the wing leader. Yeah, the, the leader goes where they go. They end up wherever they want to end up, and then everyone snaps into So position. next turn, when we're coming more into combat range, I will walk through step-by-step step my wing's activation sure. um, to make that a little more clear. And right. obviously, when you, when you get it for yourself, you can look in the rule book and go through whatever situations you may have for whatever combinations of pilots and ships that you want to use. Yeah. All right. All right. And then I'm going to plow straight forward in my own forces. Yeah. Right. Now, woo, woo. now I'm going to show off the good old stop maneuver. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now this drains one of my energy because it's a red maneuver. So I'm down to six here. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't go anywhere. Um, because I am not stressed, uh, I still get my actions. Um, because the energy uh, eats that stress the out. Energy just ate it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's one of the things is energy and stress play together in a direct way now. Um, and so, you know, mm. like stress is essentially, you know, absorbed by the ship's systems. It's got lots of, you know, like complex circuitry and power systems and all that yeah. that can manage that for you up to a point. Um, and also the junior crew can be stressed out, but the captain can still get orders. Exactly. Um, and let's see, for my actions, uh, let's start with a, so I've got a couple of teams on here that give me some more action options. So in addition yeah. to my default yeah, options. Spin that around. Oh, so sorry, I keep doing it. that. Yeah, it's okay. Um, uh, I have got a couple of teams that give me more options. So yeah. um, I could reinforce if I thought I was going to get shot. I feel pretty comfortable. Um, uh, I, I think for my first action, I'll just focus. Mm -hmm. um, so I got you here. Ah, thank you. Um, and then for my second action, I think I am going to actually coordinate um, and uh, do that into a calculate. And that is a white linked action. Yeah. So I'll take a calculate. Too, okay. If you that mind. seems all right. There you go. And um, for that coordinate. What? So while you're thinking of what you're going to do, yeah. um, uh, as many first edition players will remember, mm -hmm. uh, first edition ships could not, huge ships could not focus. Uh, this is something we've changed for second edition. Now all of the huge ships can focus uh, or potentially calculate if they're entirely crewed by droids. Uh, we don't have any of those sh such ships yet, but it's a design space we are aware of. We do like droids. Um, the, now the advantages of focus are somewhat limited for huge ships as they have agility of zero. Um, but they can still be rolling defense dice because of obstruction or long range, mm -hmm. and it allows them to modify their attack dice in ways that in first edition they would have had to pay points and fill upgrade slots to do. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, let's do cards back. Um, a uh, hmm. let's do a lock. All right. I think this might have been pushed into range. Oh, yes, it has. Like, OK. Oh, maybe. Yep. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. All right. OK. So uh, what number do you want? Uh, that is number 20. Um, we should oh, have that's that on be the from sheet. The, yep, I got it on here. Great. That is the ID token. There we go, 20. Perfect. Uh, question about this scenario. So when does the scenario end? Scenario ends. Uh, so there's a specific scenario end rule in here. Yeah. Uh, end of game. Uh, pretty much all scenarios have these. Yep. Uh, it ends when there are no ships with payloads in play. Sure. So if Brooks kills them all, it ends. Or if Max gets them off the table. 
Yep. Or whatever combination in between. So I do not have to finish off all of your other Y wings and A wings. You don't have to destroy anything at all. No. Mm -hmm. I, if you we can do this stuff off the board. If you just let me through. Uh, <laughs> no. Think of the Wookiees. <laughs> no. Think of the Wookiees. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of the Wookiees already. <laughs> Those darn Wookiees. All right. Uh, cool. Um, okay. So yeah. So that's uh, that's. That so yep. let's go to engagement. So do you want to talk about huge ship engagement? Yeah. So or actually, let's wait to talk about huge ship oh, engagement okay. because they're not going to engage yet. Cool. Uh, <laughs> so despite their high initiative values, we'll get to why in a moment. You might have like a really garbage shot here. You might have like so a shot there. So seven sisters out. Um, fours, twos. Nope. You, you, uh, you, you, ones, so, uh, since... Did, did, did your two here clip the corner? Or no, not I, quite. I don't think so. No, nope. I don't, and this one, I believe, is too far back. I think I get to throw two attack dice. I am just barely out of range. Uh, uh, yeah. I am first player, so I'm going to get to shoot first. All right, then. Uh, so, my other rim garrison of my Gazandi here, they have an initiative of seven, but they have an engagement value of one. So during the engagement phase, they will engage at an initiative value of one instead. So um, sometimes two chips can actually shoot before uh, standard chips. Not often, but in cases like this, it comes up. Mm -hmm. We actually didn't plan this. So I'm going to measure with this range five ruler. Wow. Uh, yeah. This is from the premium ruler tool. Uh, so I do have range all the way out to your Corvette. You so that? so is it is it like one green die, two green dice, three green dice in terms of uh, the defender adding? It's actually four. one, two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Two Just for four beyond range. Beyond. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead uh, and fire my targeting battery. All at right. That CR90. Mm -hmm. So it's just a three die attack, and I just have a focus token. Uh, range two to five. Bonus tax, spend one energy. So I'm gonna count my energy down to two from mm -hmm. three. Uh, you'll notice we don't have to assign energy tokens to specific cards anymore. Yeah. That was a really kind of fiddly method of doing it. Yeah, that's really uh, nice. I will go ahead and spend that focus token. Might as well. Give the second hit. Mm -hmm. All right. So I am gonna get defense dice because of this. This is range four. Yep. Uh, and this is just the primary attack. No, this is all the way out to range five. Oh, this is range five. Okay, but either way, it's two defense dice. Because yep. I have zero by default, but I do pick up two for the range. Yep. Um, I don't think this is obstructed closest point in arc, because if you're no. careful it maneuvering there, you're just barely poking out. So, yeah, here's the shot. All right. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, so you had so, uh, this interesting situation is uh, part of why allowing huge ships to focus and calculate uh, has just made the game more interesting. Mm -hmm. You actually get to defend, Max. I do. <laughs> so that will stop all of the damage. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, after I perform this attack, I may acquire a lock on the defender. So here is my target lock number one. All right. On the CR90. There it is. Uh, and then I will go ahead and use my range three primary attack. Because that was a bonus attack, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and bonus attacks can be performed before or after regular attacks in any order. So, and you can split them up so that will just go ahead and fire at the Y Wing, who got a lock on me. So this will be a range three primary on um, Gray Squadron number 20. Oh, Whoa. Ooh, I like that. All right, so that's range three? Yes. Well, I've at least got two dice. Ugh. All right. Well, here's hoping for the best, Gray Squadron. <laughs> Not so good. <laughs> All right, well, give me some shields and put those out, and then I will well, uh, deactivate Well, there are two deactivated shields, yeah. and then you have a damage deck over there? I do. There is one over here. You had a crit in there, too? Ugh. That was on 20? Yes. Yeah, oh, I got it on the right one on the first try. Cool. Panic pilot! Oh, no! Gain two stress, then repair this card. Uh, and stress is pretty important to this now. Here are our shields, and here okay. are stress for that panicked gray squadron pilot with the... Oh, um, poor Zanti's guy. guns open and fire. Oh, that poor guy. He's having a bad day. Did I get one more shield, actually? Okay. There you go. Thank you. I don't need shields. No. I do need someone to have sister, I suppose. All right. Uh, uh, that's my shots. I'm going to shoot you with an A-Wing. Shoot me with an A-Wing. Pew, pew. 
All right. Mm -hmm. It's a hit. Okay. Long hit. Um, so this is at range three. Through a rock. Through a rock. Yep. Uh, so despite my zero agility, I have some defense. Uh, and I'm going to dodge yeah, that. My Gazanti is <laughs> hiding in the Just asteroids. juked right out of the way. Uh, yeah. All right. So, uh, as you can see already, huge ships are uh, significantly less vulnerable to the kind of chip damage they would be vulnerable to in first edition mm -hmm. because they actually will occasionally get to roll some defense dice and we'll get to modify them when they do. All right. And then I've got my ion cannon battery and targeting battery on this guy. And I might even have a side arc shot. So let's start with uh, right now. You might. Yes. I might. Yes. Um, it goes out to four. Uh, so not well, you're not in range, but it is an arc. Okay. But I do have the front. You do have the front. And five with a targeting battery. So let's do that. Um, and one thing to note is the turrets, it doesn't matter which turret is placed where. You always measure closest point in arc. And yep. The turrets have the handy lines on the base to tell you which arc your turret is in. Yep. Um, so, uh, I've got that TIE Fighter. Okay. Um, so you've got the targeting battery back at me. I am going to targeting battery back at Now, I could targeting battery at your Gazanti to try to pick up the lock there, but I think I'd rather try to grease the TIE Fighter. Uh, so, I'm going to throw three dice at you and see how that goes. Ugh. Mm. All right. Well, I've got my three agility uh, plus two for a range five shot. Uh, uh, and that one is on the gas cloud. Did I get the modification if I'm on you the gas cloud? You don't. No? Okay. No, this is not obstructing. Okay. Cloud. Well, I didn't get the focus token. <laughs> so I take a damage. Have a damage. All right. That is my left flank, number eight. So that has one damage already. Uh, a question from Corwin Hyatt. Uh, huge ship decloaking. How will it function, or is Sictrago blocked from transferring a cloaking device to a sea rock? Uh, Sikachiro is not going to be able to put a cloaking device on a sea rock. Um, there are actually also explicit rules that say that huge ships can't interact with certain things. Sure. I'm not going to get into all of those details right, right now, but right. there are just certain things that the rules for huge Most ships Most of just the say, common sense effects. Don't even try. Yeah. You can't. You know, you can't throw thing. them around. With it's that classic line: thing. "No ship that large has a cloaking device." Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if huge ships are going to have cloaking, it would have to be on a you know huge ship that we see cloaking. Right. And then it would probably just have special rules for it entirely. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. All right. So I don't think we have anything else left to do except that I get to lock that Tie Fighter. Yep. Uh. What number do you want for that? Oh, uh, why don't you toss me uh, ID? Just pick a number you didn't okay. use and toss uh, me an ten. ID for it. Ten is actually one. Well, yeah. There we go. Ten is one of the numbers of my Tie Fighters, but they're not going to be taking any locks. Great. All, All right. right. Next round. All right. So once again, I'm reaching for my dials, and then I realize I don't need to use them. Uh, can, so are huge ships also then not allowed to boost or barrel roll? Yeah, they're just prohibited from doing that. Okay. Um, very good, very good. Again, it is possible there could someday be a huge ship that could do those things, but it would just have to have its own rules that accounted for how it did that. Right, exactly. Uh, let's see. Another question. Uh, I'll deploy them. Yeah, see if we can show yeah. cards or details of the other epic ships. We might be able to show a little bit of that off at the end of the stream here. Um, though we, we still want to save some things for you know previews and for the release. So, we'll uh, we'll take a look. What are you guys thinking going into this uh, deployment? Should probably take these focus tokens off, yeah? Ah, yes, definitely pull the focus tokens. I got yep. Well, um, unfortunately, Max turned his Y wings away from me, mm -hmm. and so my TIE fighters are going to, to actually engage. My TIE fighters are going to have to turn around right. at an angle where I'm chasing him back towards the gravity well. Yeah. Uh, so I don't really want to be in a position where I'm following him down into the gravity well at the end because my ships don't have shields and they're going to be eating straight crits yeah, if they get be stressed burnt up and a lot are faster. pointing right in. So, Almost like those TIE fighter wings aren't aerodynamic. Uh, <laughs> almost, yeah. But I have some tricks up my sleeve. So we'll see how they pan out. I'm almost done. Dials with ships, please. 
Who's going where? Got the right one? Yeah. That way we know who activated and who didn't. So some people asking about the uh, release time period. So these are coming up here um, in the next month or so, uh, next month or two is when we're looking at seeing uh, these come out. And so the current release plan is just the huge conversion kit, Epic Battles, and the Tantive Four, uh, launching first, followed by the Imperial Raider about a month after that, uh, or I'm sorry, the Sea Rock, and then the Imperial Raider about a month after the Sea Rock. So that is the current plan of action on releasing these. So pretty soon, but not dropping them all at once so you don't have like a $300 charge hitting you if you want to buy them all. Talk us through your thoughts, Max. Well, perhaps if I talk you through my thoughts, Brooks is going to know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'll talk you through my thoughts. Yeah, there we go. Uh, because the effect is pretty heavily telegraphed by the few upgrades I did actually take. Mm -hmm. uh, targeting battery, uh, if you remember from my Gazanti, that allowed me to acquire a target lock. And then Requiem is going to allow each ship that deploys from me to acquire a lock on the ship I have locked. Mm -hmm. And I have four Thai bombers docked to my Gazanti, yeah. all carrying a variety of target lock requiring missiles and torpedoes. That seems pretty good. Uh, so I have assigned my target, the pilots uh, know what they're doing, they're feeding the information to their individual ship computers, and I have some concussion missiles, mm -hmm. I have some plasma torpedoes, I have some ion torpedoes, and I have some diamond boron missiles oh. that I am going to be throwing Max's way in the very near future. All right, well I'm ready when you are. Uh, well, in the system phase, I am going to deploy some ships. Do it. So. First, I'm going to deploy a Tide Bomber with Diamond Boron Missiles. And Popping that out. one is going to do a simple one bank as it comes off the ship. Yep, of course. Uh, he can actually pass me your one thing. Absolutely. So it's going to go ahead and launch from Max's front markers there and just swoop up to here. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, and then it's an action now, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes, if it's. Uh, yeah. So yeah. it is actually going to go ahead and acquire a lock on its own because I do not want to fire my diamond boron missiles at Max's CR-90. I want to fire them at something that I can actually splash damage onto his other ships with. Okay, so that's going to be my one deployment right now. Mm -hmm. Not doing any more? I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. You ready then? And is this <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. All we'll, right. we'll go ahead and do it. Let's do it. All right, A-Wings. Got the old three turn for this guy. Which might be wrong, but that's all right. I just want him in that vicinity. Yep. Looks like it would be a bump. Yes. Boop. That's fine. Mm -hmm. He's exactly where I need him. Uh, and I think this is going to be another bump because of that bump. Four straight. Oh yeah, big time. Uh, yeah. A uh, question from GM Scott. If they're the correct type, could you launch all four of the ties directly into a formation? Um, like into a wing, I believe. To is a what wing. He's asking. Um, you could... If you wanted to have four ties all in the wing, all docked to the ship, but they would be broken from the wing while they're docked to the ship. Yeah. Um, and so there is not currently a way to do that. They would all have to launch individually. However, um, I will point out that we've already done 
wing cards with specific effects that alter the standard rules of the wing. Veteran wing leader mm -hmm. upgrade that Max is using. Max, if you want to throw veteran wing leader yeah. in here, is essentially the standard wing. Sure. Um, and so Agent my, of the Empire and First Order Elite are variations on that theme. Sure. My two is next? Yes. So yeah. such effects okay. could, of course, exist in the future. Mm -hmm. If someone has, uh, as Max is moving, uh, someone has the first edition, you know, CR90, for instance, and they get the conversion and kit, is there anything that they would a... need to buy the second edition CR90 for? And no, you get any it's all the same yeah. components. I mean, desire to have two CR90s. <laughs> yes. um, I believe we touched up the paint scheme a bit as well. Yeah. But... Sure, sure. Aesthetic reasons, uh, yes. no, or no you're playing a, a battle on a ping pong table, which is roughly five by ten. I know because I've done it uh, <laughs> a lot. Is that uh, my threes next? Yeah, because uh, I got four. Yep, and you're uh, two until, until these ships actually days. have yep. their turn to activate. Yeah. All right, so we're doing the old two turn. The old two turn. This might be a bit of a cluster. Oh mess. wow, wow! This this wing is. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Gonna get messed up. <laughs> yeah, it is. But that's okay. So, this bump's here. Yep. Uh, what are you looking for? This wing tool? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. Actually, I'll use the little one. Okay. Should be fine. So, drop this down here. Put this guy over here. Uh, and then this guy, not going to fit there. So yep. he breaks from the wing, so that his number 20 gets booted out, uh, and then resolves the maneuver on Yvonne's dial. And so even if that were a maneuver that uh, that Y-Wing did not have the capability yes. to do normally, he it would still execute it in this context. In this context. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I will stress that, by and large, wings will be all of the same ship type. Right. Um, when they don't, such as Agent of the Empire and First Order Elite, they will have very specific considerations and specific combinations. Yeah. Uh, this is not just a free form, I'm going to take a Jedi and have them fly my Arc 170s around sure. like a ninja. Yeah. Um, all right, that's my stuff. Okay, well, add initiative four. Seventh sister is going to do a three speed left turn. I can move that initiative tracker out of the way. Whoop, whoop. Uh, and I am happy to keep my fighters all in formation. Uh, you'll note if I had done a shorter I'm turn. Actually, you can have seventh sister do. Uh, I suppose I should pick that first. Well, Seventh Sister has a variety of other options available to her and has the Force, so she's going to take a target lock on that Grey Squadron ship who broke formation, who is the stressed one. Yes, just the stressiest. Uh, <laughs> and then... Um, Most stressiest. My left flank moves first, so I will actually put this... Uh, out here, so because each of the wing leaders mm. and each of the wing members has their own uh, ID number on the card, and they'll activate in ascending order. So my leader will activate, my left flank will activate, my right flank will activate with nine, and then my supports will activate in their turns. Sure, and that order is is set. Yeah, that order is fixed. Yeah. Um, it, it's the wing leader and then the front row from left to right, the back row from left to right. Sure. Uh, no, back middle is actually first. Oh, yes. If, it, um, if they're the in the back middle. So, all right, so that pilot will move up there mm -hmm. uh, and just take a focus. That pilot will move up there, holding the formation, and take a focus. Uh, this pilot will move up to here, take a focus. And this pilot will move up to here Woo. and take a focus. Seeing that final pile, I just like teleport across the board is pretty funny. <laughs> yep. And so they are all still in formation together, unlike Max's wing. Yes. All right. Um, cute chips. So this is the terrible mistake I made. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you gotta run over your own I ship. move forward instead of remaining stationary. Hey. <laughs> uh, but why not? I'm going to grab the normal one. You can do it with the regulars too, though, at the same distances. Yes. So I'm going to move up. I'm going to hit myself. Smash. Oh, well. <laughs> Just barely. I was uh, very concerned about 
maintaining enough distance from Max to actually fire the weapon, because it's range two to three weapon, that I did not worry too much about, uh, cl clearly I didn't worry enough about what I was actually doing with my Gazanti, because I wanted to get through those asteroids first. So for damage, what was the speed of that maneuver? That was a speed two maneuver. You get two crit damage. I get two crit damage. Yeah. And I don't have any shields. So that is a direct hit first. Mm -hmm. So I should have done that one at a time. Boop. Yep. Boop. And then a uh, disabled power regulator. So that ship is going to ionize itself when it engages. All right. And then Max can rotate it. And I will. Oh, no. I mean, you, you probably won't go off the board. You got I did ion. this to myself. You got to turn of ion and then. So then having the having the bomber kind of drop to the back there, that's just the effects Wait, of Wait, unless this was a plan to get a bomb into my backfield. Unfortunately, that is the one TIE bomber I have without any bombs. Ooh, that would have been good. So that's just the effects of the being bumped by a huge ship. Yes. Getting dropped to the rear arc. All right, let's see if I made the same mistake with my crash city. And you're in the danger zone. Oh, what actions are you doing? And you're facing towards the uh, the planet, right? Oh, with the uh, with that with bomber. Asia. Uh, Evan is trying to distract me here. Yeah. I see. I see. <laughs> well, you've been favoring the Wookiees all along. Yes, it's true. true. It's true. Well, all right. How well, can you not? Um, I am going to actually. I can give my buddy a hand there. I am going to coordinate that tie bomber. Yeah. Into doing a barrel roll to the right, uh, giving that bomber a little more space before the edge of the board. And I mean, if I had had a bomb, this would have been an amazing setup. This would have been the most uh, brilliant. Unfortunately, bank I shot off yourself. Play, bouncing your pool ball off of the ceiling. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, that is a coordinate, and then I am going to, again, reinforce on the front because there's a lock on me, there's some Y-wings looking at me. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of health. I, I mean, 16 is a lot of health. Mm -hmm. But it's not a lot of health for a huge ship. The ghost only has 14. so Or the ghost has 14, so, you know. Okay, uh, and then... Yeah, so the big guy. All right, so let's see if I made the same mistake. So I did a four forward, which I think I'm going to be okay doing. You yeah. want that? Oh, perfect. All right, so they move middle to middle. Oh, no, I'm going to do it too. <laughs> oh, this is going to be by millimeter. Oh, we're good. Oh, good. There we go. Wow, nice. <laughs> Planet. Judge. <laughs> T.O. Uh, I, I sanction this. Um, Safe. So uh, that was a red maneuver. Yes. So I lose energy. Uh, oh, I did regain two last time. So I regained one. So I'm, I'm back at six. Mm -hmm. You can't go above your starting max, yeah. I assume. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, you are capped at your starting maximum. Although many titles adjust your maximum. So, for yeah. instance, I was considering the Liberator title, which would have yeah. given me plus one energy and the ability to dock ships, and I now really wish I had. <laughs> and some of the titles are actually going to decrease your mm. maximums as well uh, sure. to give you some other benefits. Sure. Um, and we've got more titles now than we did in first edition. Oh, cool. All right, so cool, keep cool. this moving along. Let's do actions. Um, I think you were right about that reinforce. Um, okay, but I've got a damage control team, oh, so oh. I'm going to reinforce into a calculate. Okay, it is a reinforce. Uh, do you have a calculate over there? Oh, uh, yes, I do. Uh, I thought, yes. There we go. Uh, and then I think I'm going to do a... And this is your veteran wing leader card. Thank you. Uh, and then I think I'm going to do a coordinate on... Who wants a coordinate? Who wants a coordinate? 20 is stressed, but also has a lock on me already. Yeah, well, 20 also can't do actions thanks to that. Yeah, and, but it isn't in range to fire those torpedoes. 20 is uh, twenty's going to have a bad time. Oh, you know who wants to coordinate? Yvonne Verlaine. Yvonne Verlaine wants to coordinate, mm -hmm. for sure. OK. All right. Shooting time. Uh, right? Shooting time, yeah. So start of the engagement phase, Yvonne Verlaine. So. Start of the engagement phase, I can spend a focus token to choose a friendly ship at range 0 to 1. Rolls an extra die until the end of the phase. Okay. Mm -hmm. What ship is that going to be? I think it's going to be this guy, because i he's such an obvious target. He is. That for you to not shoot at him is you know pretty unattractive, but... Mm -hmm. 
you know. Okay. Hopefully that keeps them alive a little longer. At uh, initiative uh, eight, seven, six, five, four, the seventh sister attacks. Yep. Um, already down to five damage. I it is it is really hard to pass up. I think it's a shot I think it's still the right one. shot. Uh, so I'm gonna take a range two shot with seventh sister mm -hmm. at Gray Squadron number twenty. Uh, so two dice here. Four Gray Squadron number twenty. Uh, hits crit. So you got one two defense dice. Is, I don't like that. All right. Well, come on, buddy. Oh, not what I needed. <laughs> All right, so we've got a loose stabilizer in there. Ugh. Okay. And he's got three hull left. Okay, and then initiative three, Yvonne Verlaine. Yeah, Yvonne. All right, so. What is she up to? Well, let's see what her targets look like. She could go after the seventh sister, and that's maybe not a bad shot. Or she could throw a dice. I think I'm going to throw a dice at the big ship. Got to start wearing that thing down now. Okay. So let's throw two dice, just a blistering. I lost a, a layout. Sorry. Blistering two die attack. Yeah. Okay, All right. truly well, blistering. Truly blistering. <laughs> and uh, range three, I would do the defense die, but I do not need it. So yep. you spent your focus token. Sure did. Okay. Uh, initiative two, I'm first player, so all of my twos are going to fire first. Yep. Uh, so unfortunately, Scimitar is facing the wrong way. Mm -hmm. uh, but the left flank here will make a range two shot in the open uh, for Gray Squad there uh, for one hit. Come on, Gray Squad. There we go. Okay. My right flank will take the same shot because that's a lot better than the three dice an A Wing is going to roll uh, for one crit. Come on, Gray Squad. Killing me, Gray Squad. I got a lot of crits on them. <laughs> All right. Ooh, direct hit. Gray Squad has one health left. Okay. Well, then my left Rip support will take a range three shot on Gray Squadron. So you are actually rolling three defense dice this with a so Y-Wing. so many dice for a Y-Wing. And I'm going to blank out. And then my right support is going to also take a range three shot. So you got a chance. I'm going to focus that to yep. two. All right. Come on, buddy. Oh, uh, not quite. Rah, rah, rah. Not quite. Uh, unfortunately, that was not a ship carrying your critical cargo. No. So I'm going to have to work my way through the rest of them. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm going to pull a little trick here. I've got selfless on my A wings, and I think I'm in the attack arc. You are. Did you have a crit in there? Yeah, the last one was a crit. I'm going to suffer damage. Uh, the, the one before was a crit, rather. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to suffer damage. You would have done that. On my A-Wing to... Uh, uh, where the stress tokens go? Keep them alive. That. And that target um, lock. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so which A-Wing did that? The one closer or farther? That from? was the one uh, has to be in the attack arc. I think you both qualify. Yeah, Let's do the qualify. one with the focus token. Okay, Actually, makes sense. Could, could you give me a pair of IDs for those guys? Maybe like two and three there. Uh, there's three. They're not there's gonna be taking two. any locks. So I wouldn't need to worry about okay. that. Okay, uh, and then your twos are gonna go ahead and fire. Any questions while he's doing that? Let's see if there are questions. Uh, how do you get a ship back in formation if you can? We may get to show you that. Uh, actually, no, we won't. This guy is going to have problems. So the reason this guy is not going to be able to come back to formation, I bumped him. He was like, eh. The reason he's not going to get to come back to formation is because uh, he's stressed. He's very stressed. And there are a number of things that prohibit you from returning to, to formation, being stressed, being ionized, a number of other things. Mm -hmm. However, if he were not stressed, then at the, during the next end phase, I, if he was at range one of Yvonne, I could say he's back in formation. Sure. And I would move his card, and he would be back in formation. And the next yep. time Yvonne moves, as long as he fits, he goes back to position. Got it. Of course, this does require that position in formation to be clear. Yes. Uh, sure. So you are probably only going to be able to get back in formation if you've swept out away from the fight and you're able to come back around. Mm -hmm. um, it will sometimes be worth it. I expect that most of the time the wing is going to disperse. It most often comes up when you have that like one guy who just gets bumped out a little, and yep. then on your next move you're like, all right, they're coming back. If in. I so if I had if I had flown a bomber in front of one of my tie fighters, I could probably pop it back in. Right. All right, your shots. Yeah. Okay. I do have a few of them. Um, all right. So the sheath bead. Let's get this going. Okay. So range three. Garazab Aurelius. Oh yeah. 
Okay. One hit on my bomber who evades. What's it? All right. Oh, and uh, my bomber did engage, even though it didn't do anything, so it's ionized. Cool. Um, then I'm pretty sure I'm not range one for my advanced protons here, but I'm staying alive another turn to make your life unpleasant. Yes, yes, you are. Um, uh, so well until you blow me up with the, uh, with that guy. That's but this can shoot. Um, so let's unload some dice. Uh, you know what? It's got a lock. Let's use it. Oh, we got the chance. Two dice into that goes on to. Okay. Uh, I'm not rolling any defense dice because I'm not obstructed by that. All right. Um. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend the lock. Okay. Ow. All right. Um, all right, one hit. Okay, well, I'm just gonna lose one shield. Uh, my shields don't have front or rear hull zones uh, in second edition, um, and there are actually less of them, but there are, they are automatically regenerating. So if Max doesn't do any other damage, I'll get back up to full health. Well, let's see about doing some other damage. And of course I said that, so he's going to do it. We're going to try. Of course. <laughs> All right, so let's throw, we've got some range three attacks here, so let's do Yvonne first. Or Yvonne should have, did Yvonne attack already? No, she should have. I don't think we so. We forgot her. Oh, well, it's we fine. Probably skipped her. It's fine. Um, it didn't matter for her purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, one crit. One crit. I can't stop it. Shields down to three. Uh, uh, range three. I kind of Yeah, it's range three. Die. You get a defense die. Uh, doesn't stop it. All right. I'm reinforced, but you're only dealing one point of damage, so. Yep. Effect. And then Gray Squadron. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, that's all the twos. Yep. Your ones. Uh, my uh, oh, yeah. garrison ship Your is going to go first. Goes first. All right. So I am again going to fire my. I'm actually going to fire my targeting battery on, if it, you're, yeah, you're close enough. Uh, so range two, I'm going to fire my targeting battery at Max's badly damaged Y-Wing, because I would like to get it gone. Dead. Uh, <laughs> so here are three attack dice. It's range two to five, so you are still far enough away for me to shoot. And I used my actions for other things, so that's a miss. I am not going to change my lock. All it's right. very important to keep my lock on that CR-90. All right. Um, do you have anything else? No. All right. So then. your ones and my your ones. Thing zero. So A wings. I'm pretty sure we're no shot here. Nope. Uh, this guy's got a shot though. Range two to the party. Is yeah. the uh, is the range five ruler included in the huge ship conversion kit? Uh, a cardboard version. Right. Yeah. Is not, included in the conversion not, kit. Not the plastic. This one. is from the premium movement tools and range templates. Sure. Um, the same, it's the same punch board, uh, range five. It's the familiar one from first edition. Yep. Basically. Perfect. Um, might be touched up slightly. Yeah, know. it was, the old one was a little offset. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. Well, this A-Wing, uh, one of these is damaged, right? Uh, yeah. Left flank is damaged. Yeah. Let's, let's go range two to that guy. Why not? Two A-Wing dice. Uh, I've got a focus on there, so I'll spend it. There's a hit and a crit. Okay, three All defense right. dice. Ooh, oh, there we go. Okay, good. There's the paint. All right, and then my big guy at zero. Okay, so let's... Yeah, quite a bit of firepower. I do. So <laughs> let's start with the... Um, hmm. Let's start with the targeting battery on the... Uh, no. Let's start with the side shot at is that range three of that guy? Yes. It's just uh, oops. Uh, let's start with the side shot at that guy. So I'll use my four side gun dice. Okay. I have the lock and I will spend it. Alright. Mm -hmm. Three hits. Okay. Defense. I have one. I will use a focus to evade the second. So I will take one damage. All right. I am glad you decided to not take that turbo laser. Yeah, well, it, you know, it was a little expensive. Um, <laughs> it's very potent, but it was a little expensive. I probably wouldn't hit you with the turbo laser, though. Um, uh, and then uh, let's do the ion cannon at the same fellow. So okay. I'm going to spend an energy, dropping me to five. 
and fire my four die ion cannon battery at that guy. Ugh. <laughs> well, well, I have a calculate. I'll spend it. Okay. So two hits. Uh, nothing at all. All right. So, so ion one. cannon battery here. If this attack hits, the defender suffers one crit damage, and all I and all hit crits uh, inflict. Ion damn it. Well, I am destroyed regardless. Boom. So. so you'll notice the ion cannon battery is slightly more souped up than the regular ion cannon or ion cannon turret. Right. It's because it's enormous. <laughs> you see, it's very large. <laughs> um, all right. I like that. And then let's go targeting battery at, uh, let's go for the seventh sister. Uh, I don't oh, believe I don't think she's I'm in your arc. I don't think she is. You're right. Maybe you're right. Yeah, just down. All right. Well, then, uh... This fellow. Well, he rolls those dice. Uh, I'm Actually, sure I'll go I'll go many of you are thinking why he didn't just target all of his Sierra Nugget's firepower on the seventh system in the first place. That's because uh, part of the effect of all of the wing leader cards is to allow all of their wing mates to share hits that are rolled against them uh, and spread the damage across the wing if you are trying to specifically kill the leader. Where is it? Uh, so if you have a character, you have it back over oh, there. Oh, right, perfect. Um, so if you have a character you want to keep in the game as long as possible, assign them as the leader of a wing. It will tie them down a bit with the other ships around them. Uh, notably, it, it sometimes blocks repositioning actions, but it will give them a lot longer life. Absolutely. All right. I think uh, we're to the end phase. Mm -hmm. So because I blanked out that roll, you get to get all your shields back. Okay. Well, uh, you did do a bit of damage, so I'm only recovering one shield back up to four. Okay. Of five. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm making progress on you. So that's one of the things about huge ships. They are tough. It's pretty difficult to burn through them. A good salvo of ordnance can do it. That's why I brought those advanced proton torpedoes, although we'll see if I get to use them. Yes. Uh, importantly, though, because they're only regenerating one for the smaller ships and two for the larger ships a turn, uh, once you get their shields down, unlike in first edition, they can't just spend energy to refill them all back up. Uh, without investing a lot of resources into energy and shield regeneration. So the way this often goes is, as you'll see here, these two ships, well, they'll be sniping at each other on the way in, um, and they'll make a little bit of progress, but they won't make enormous progress. And then as they sort of close and bring their big guns to bear, they'll really start hammering each other. Uh, this poor guy, he's kind of in the atmosphere, isn't he? Uh, yes, he is. So, so he's going to get a stress token. Uh, that, that poor man. Well, he shouldn't have... Uh, and is something. ionized, so that yeah. uh, so should sit over there. Okay. All right. So dials. Dials. Well, now that, now that I remember that my Gazanti will actually move forwards once I launch my ships. And uh, a good thing to know, when launching from a huge ship, you can go from the front, the back, or the sides. So we are probably going to have to call it in about half an hour uh, for, in well, the interest of time. We but. will get a good round or two of combat in here. Then. Yeah. I think we'll probably be able to see the outcome. And one of the things we really just tried to push in uh, So one thing I'm going to do in this end phase um, before I start here is I'm going to voluntarily split my Ooh. right support from the wing. So okay. that fighter is breaking off and will assign its own dial. Cool. And I have to assign a dial for my... Uh, Left flank, or uh, yeah, left flank. A uh, question from Krugbull: uh, Will the rebel, re will the rebel transport have any armaments? Um, uh, yes, it has a default armament of, I believe, two mm -hmm. primary weapon, uh, front arc, um, and has some ability to equip more weapons, uh, but some of it is uh, gated behind certain titles or other upgrades. Um, similarly, the Sea Rock has a couple of specific options and the configuration uh, to give it a bit more firepower since the Scum and Separatists don't have a huge ship of uh, a larger size and, and more mm -hmm. combat oriented. So there are some options for some of those smaller ships to be more combat oriented if they want to, although the CR-90 and the Raider are both much better suited for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Ready. What are, what are you thinking here, Max? Ready as well. Right. Uh, well system phase. Yeah, uh-oh. I am going <laughs> to launch some more Thai bombers, uh, keeping in mind where I'm going to go with all of these ships. Yeah, right. This time, not running over our own ship. So... All right, so I am going to launch a TIE bomber armed with plasma torpedoes and proton bombs using a two-speed left turn. Mm -hmm. That will be you. To here. Uh, unfortunately, I do overlap that gas cloud, but since I'm launching from Requiem and Requiem has a target lock, I can acquire a lock on the CR-90 as well. Nice. Um, then, because I am Imperial, I am going to go ahead and launch a ship from my left midpoint. Uh, this is a type bomber. There's a, there's a rock out there. No, there is a rock It'll be there. fine. <laughs> but this is fifth brother in Deathfire. Are you more afraid or of with the rock Deathfire. or me? Uh, so Deathfire is going to go ahead and do a three right bank mm -hmm. out to here. Uh, I am overlapping an asteroid. Yep. So some dice. here's some dice at myself. There, Ooh, oh, I should blink. roll it here. It is a hit. Mm -hmm. um, so that is one damage on Deathfire already. But Deathfire has fifth brother with the force, concussion missiles, and an electro proton bomb. Oh, God. Mm. <laughs> Uh, and then I will go ahead and launch my last TIE Bomber from my rear pegs, and that is going to be a two-speed right turn. I'll put these dials out with the bombers that executed them. And that one is equipped with ion torpedoes and seismic charges. It's going to be so much bomb next turn. It's <laughs> going to be so much bomb and so much missile. Uh, both of them are also going to acquire locks on the big guy. The big guy because of Requiem. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, cool. And this one is actually going to get its own action. Ah. Uh, so it is going to go ahead and barrel roll to the right to give Scimitar Squadron there some space. Oh, nice. That that pilot is considerate of its fellows, at least. All right. Okay. All right, so uh, let's see. Initiative ones. Yeah, the ones. So we're actually, that wasn't, we hadn't even gotten into the activation phase, you know? Uh, all right, so the A-Wings. Uh, so first I'm gonna do uh, this guy who should have a dial somewhere in this mess. I put out an A-Wing dial. It's back it, Oh, I put it over here, okay, great. All right, uh, two straight. a lot of ships on the board. There yes, are. Yes, it is. And uh, let's, uh, let's go with the old focus to live. Mm -hmm. Strong option. The focus of life. All right. Uh, and then a one bank, or one turn here uh, to the, oh, God, this is what I get for flying. No, no, I got that right. right. I got it yeah. right. I got it right. Yes. All right. And focus to live. Okay. At initiative two, I have a TIE fighter here who's broken off from the wing, who's taking a two-speed right bank oh. off in this direction. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to end up. That's going to end up bumping yeah, you actually. Be oh, geez. Yep. Here we go. Uh, oh, maybe not. Yep. Okay. Well, <laughs> it bumps with his his wingmate there. Boink. Um, and they're all still good for now. Okay. There we go. Maybe you should have stayed in the wing. Uh, and then my ionized TIE bomber just drifts towards the back. Yep. And clears the stress and the ion. Do my twos move first? Uh, my twos. Your twos, yes, two. yes, 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 yes. Yeah, your. That's right. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so uh, then we've got the sheet lead. Three straight. And let's do a focus. 
Ah, uh, and then the this guy, this poor guy, uh, is doing a one straight. So it becomes pretty apparent we're playing with 400 points aside mm -hmm. on a three foot by three foot table, um, and we all want to go to the same place about here. Right. We need to intercept. Hiding Max the gas gets cloud. Through. Right. Uh, so it gets pretty crowded pretty fast. Protect yeah, I mean it, it really cloud. captures you know something of the of the movies and the the TV shows and stuff. Right. It's just so cool. All of these fights. My threes. So. Go ahead. And the huge ships well, as well. You know, colliding in space. Lost me in here. I had the old three bank. And oh, maybe that. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. So I've blocked the wing leader. Uh, the wing mates, though, are still just going to join formation as normal. Yes, although, or the one who is in formation. Yes, although unfortunately, joining formation is going to mean a trip to the asteroid field. <laughs> Or a debris cloud, this case may be. There's a stress for you. Ah. There's a crit for you. <laughs> okay, uh, so the initiative four, the seventh sister, uh, is going to get blocked in by the Y wing on the gas cloud there. Uh, so it's going to just gonna end up right there, Perfect. Mm -hmm. which Position. is going to massively disrupt my formation. Um, this wing mate will bump. And so then we'll bump in the position they would normally normally be placed in. So they attempt to do a two bank after breaking off, which also still just bumps. Uh, this one, however, might be able to get into position or maybe blocked by my own TIE bomber. It appears the latter is the case. Jeez, um, I forgot where I put it. Came from there ish. I mean, it's <laughs> gonna end up bumping into somebody John, here. Anyways. One good thing to do if you're so, unsure about that kind of thing is throw marked, down the wing yeah, tool. I should have, I should have marked that in yeah. first, um, or just throw down the wing tool before you move everything. Uh, so, my wing has completely broken formation, so I'm gonna slide all of their indicators to represent that. Yeah, I've still got one in the formation <laughs> that actually uh, lasted longer. All right, your, your big guy. Okay, my outer room garrison's just gonna do a one speed straight forward. I'm just gonna use the um, normal one straight here yeah. real quick because they are the same length. Uh, there we go. All right, and then let's turn to uh, uh, my actions. Oh yes, here. you get your actions. So I am going to. Who does uh, number three have a lock on you? Okay, I'm going to coordinate barrel roll. To this bomber to get it out from behind the gas cloud because mm -hmm. I want to make sure it gets a good shot. So these are 400 point armies. How uh, how high do the point armies go in uh, epic battles? I mean, it can go as high as you want. So right. there are some of the six spikes. Generally speaking, it's about 300 points for a three by three. We amped it up a little today to get a little more stuff on the table. Yeah. Um, uh, 600 points for a six by three. Sure. Um, um, they can go higher. It does start right. to get crowded. Sure, sure. Um, you could play on bigger tables. I mean, too. for each three by three, add another 300 points. They're about. And, and you expand. Can, <laughs> and expand as desired. Again, yeah. we were sort of like, oh, let's do 400. That gives us some more stuff to play with, you know, but it, we could easily have said, you know, let's do 500 and that we're really just gonna smash into each other. Also, the more you take more expensive ships, with upgrades. I mean, I was looking at a list for a while that was uh, this thing and the ghost. Uh -huh. And I had like a couple A wings on top of that. Because it's, you know, the ghost is a 75 point ship. This yeah. is a 150 point ship. So you don't have to have that much stuff. Right. Coordinate, but, reinforce. All right. Four. Well, doing the three straight. Oh, yeah. Once again. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was slightly further back due to getting pushed by the stress step, but I'm pretty sure that was not going to hit him. So, uh, yeah, so then actions. Um, so, I think I'm going to throw a uh, reinforce uh, front. Good, good decision, yeah. Into a calculate. Um, and then let's do a. Uh, Coordinate onto 
while you're thinking. So one thing Max has done with his huge ship that I have not is use the team slot, which you'll probably remember from first edition. Mm -hmm. uh, the team slots are much more kind of specialized now to incentivize generally either specific actions or specific types of weapons and to give the enhanced range uh, that huge ships have over standard ships when doing those actions. Yeah. Um, so the smaller huge ships each have a single team slot, the larger ones have two, uh, so can have more flexibility, mm -hmm. uh, get a lot more efficiency out of the actions. I was just trying to use uh, Requiem here primarily to buff my bombers, get their missiles into position in time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on that subject, um, I am going to... Uh, I'm going to do coordinate, and I'm going to use this team to spend two extra energy uh, to coordinate two additional ships. Triple coordinate. Yeah. So let's do uh, evades out here. Yeah, let's do evades out there so I can get some evade tokens. That would be great. Uh, and let's do a lock for... Uh, no, let's just do a focus for Yvonne. Okay. For, oh yeah, obviously a focus for Yvonne. Gotta have Yvonne focus. I, uh, I would have jammed number 20 there if they weren't already stressed, because I did not want your assault to proton torpedoes going No, off. I figured you didn't. Uh, yeah, okay. So, engagement. Start of engagement. Yvonne. Yvonne, um, yeah, let's do it. Uh, Yvonne's gonna throw her bodyguard ability at... I think you're going to try to blitz my big guy off the table this turn. So Yvonne's going to throw her bodyguard ability up there. Okay. Well, I'm going to try and do just that. So at initiative four, seventh sister is going to attack number 20. Try and get rid of that pesky guy. All right. Uh, so range one, but you are obstructed by the gas cloud. Yes. <laughs> so. My plan to fly into a gas cloud worked. Uh, a hit and a crit, and I will spend my lock to re-roll the blank into a focus, and I will... Spend the force? Uh, I suppose it either way it does the same effect, so I'll spend the force to do a hit. I was planning on saving the force to use her ability, but it's a plus one either way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. Uh, well, I'm dead. Yeah, uh, you can't stop it all. Did his best. Okay. So, uh, I'll leave the seven there. Yep. Thank you. There you go. All right, uh, Yvonne. Yeah, Yvonne. Yvonne has got uh, a shot at the Gozanti that I think is actually unobstructed. Closest point in. Yeah, you're good. Uh, so let's do that. Okay, uh, range two, so I have no dice. Although I could go range one on the. Actually, let's do range one at number three. Or do I have number three? I Does don't. All right, like no. just the Gozanti then. Pew pew. Hit crit. Okay. Uh, no defense dice. I uh, am reinforced in the front, so I only take the crit and reduce my shields to three. Cool. All right. Okay. Uh, twos. So mine are going to go first. Let's do the TIE Fighters real quick. I'll take a range one shot on your A-wing here. Uh, three dice from number 12 there. Uh, one hit. No way to modify. On, um, buddy. Dodged. Um, number nine there is going to attack this one. Again, three dice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for two hits. Oh, buddy. Then Max is rolling all paint. Um, this one is going to fire at your huge ship. Yeah. At range two in the open. So I'm peeking around the rock there. Yep. Uh, Got to focus? No, I don't. All right. Because everybody bumped. That's when my offense rolls. Um, all right, so those are my fighters. Uh, now we get to more serious business here. The heavy hitters. Yes. So, so what number is this? Uh, that is three. Number three, okay. So that is at range two. So I'm going to go ahead and actually, no, I'm going to fire off. No, that's the right one. Okay, yep, I'm going to fire off my plasma torpedoes Nice. Uh, from that one. So that's one charge, mm -hmm. three dice at your huge ship. Um, I'm going to spend my lock to reroll all of that. I would do that. Because I'd like to get this to hit. There we go. That's more like it. All right. I do have one defense die because yep. I have Yvonne. 
I do so you one. stop one. All right. Uh, I do hit you though. So first you lose a shield, and then you take a damage. Ooh. And that is the lock from number three. Okay, and then this should be number two. It is indeed. Who has that locked? Unfortunately, my concussion missiles are range two to three, so I'm just going to do a primary attack at your front. Yep. With three dice. Uh, and this is fifth brother, so I'll spend the force point to change this to a crit. Mm. Doesn't really matter, you said that shields, but. All right. Okay. <clears throat> that Yvonne Verlaine effect is working out for you. Well, in that case, um, I would have, I had to reinforce as well, so. Okay, uh, and then number four. But it does get on the other one, which is good. Is gonna go ahead and fire with ion torpedoes. Now, is that obstructed? Um, I don't know. Well, maybe not. On best angle, it is not. Okay, range three. Ion torpedoes, four dice against your CR90. Ugh. I'll spend the lock. Uh, four, three. All right, I've got two dice because it's range three. And oh no, it's missile. So yep. I've got one die for move on. There we go. No good. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so I am reinforced. So I think yep. I know. Well, so, but that's not going to be damaged. Oh, yes, you're right. Um, um, let's see. What's the timing on that? So the timing on yours is in instead of. I'm going to spend one. Uh, it's after the attack hits. Yes. So that's going to go off before reinforce. Yes, because reinforce checks attack hitting. Yep. 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 So I'm going to spend one hit of crit result to cause one damage. So I lose one shield. Uh, and then the, my remaining results are going to be inflicting ion tokens. Uh, I, I think you still do get to cancel the results, though. Uh, yes, I believe that's right. So, I'll yeah. knock so one reinforce off, will do reduce it to one. You'll still take one, one ion. Energy. Yep, so the ion token is going to take some of your energy down, so you can't do quite as much with your teams and oh, your I weapons like here. Um, and then, unfortunately, my last tie bomber is facing the wrong direction. So at initiative one, or initiative, you are initiative I, I say two. I got my two twos. Well, I destroyed one of them, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I got my other two. One was destroyed, so none of them gets. All right, I got a range one shot here. So, that's <laughs> so let's take that. All right, one hit. On who? On my bomber. bomber. Okay. On uh, death fire. Be careful there. Evaded. All right. Uh, this guy will shoot here. That's range two. Unobstructed. Spend focus. Okay. Oops. That's on the scimitar? Uh, no, on the damaged guy. Okay. Uh, evade one. Take one. I have two health left. All right. Uh, and then I think we're on to the big guys. Okay. Oh, uh, no, wait, anyways. Well, I mean, at, uh, my. Uh, Your big guys, then my shoot arrows. first. Yes. So I am going to fire my front arc. Can only see those A wings, and they're behind the gas cloud, so this is not really going to be much of a shot. But I'll go ahead and take it against uh, the closer A wing to me, number two. Ugh. There, there we go. That's what that's what was going to happen, anyways. And then my targeting battery. Uh, your Y wings are both pretty healthy, so I'm going to fire at your CR90 uh, for hit and crit. One of eight, so okay. I will lose another shield. How many shields you got left there? Two. Okay. Making some progress. Yeah, definitely. Taking out some of your energy. Definitely. But I, uh, human error uh, definitely affected my initial bomber run. Well, it was, a, it was a really interesting strategy, and I think neither of us was fully prepared for it. No. <laughs> no I, was I certainly wasn't. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then your Sierra 90 is going to fire here. Yeah, the big guy. All right, let's do it. So let's start with the... Okay, so I think I'm a little bit spoiled for choice right now. Yeah, you got a double arc on my uh, Cassanti, so you can uh, fire all your weapons on it if you want. Uh, you could also tear into... Uh, Seventh Sister has no wingmates right now. Oh, yeah, so she does. So that ability is going to turn off. Mm. Mm, that's tempting. I could also try to rip apart these guys. All right, well, let's do, let's see. Um, well, Max, thinking, any mm -hmm. questions from chat? Nope, not at the moment. Anything? Oh, uh, anyways, I need to fire. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So I'll do three <laughs> dice there. There are a lot of pieces on the board. Uh, 
I like that two crit uh, roll. Okay, yeah. is that on here? Yes. Okay. Uh, um, well. Hey! Uh, uh, I like that three of eight roll. Some days are the, the uh, crits and some days are the blanks. All right, uh, three dice on to the seventh sister. Okay. Debated. All right. A-wings and TIE Fighters, there we everybody. Go. Um, okay, so I think I'm gonna go after the big guy. Let's just try to burn this guy down. Sure. So if I can burn him down, I can really break through there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think we're gonna start with the targeting battery, because okay. I am uh, far enough away to use it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's do three dice with the targeting okay. battery. And I'm not gonna have any defense dice to roll. Uh, I'll spend a calculate. So that is gonna drop my shields down to one. Uh, and then I will fire the um, uh, primary weapon, so I get to choose the order of these. And I now have the lock, which I, well, I guess I had before, yep. so I didn't actually need to do that. Um, so I've got four dice. Mm -hmm. uh, spend your energy to shoot the oh, target battery there. Yes. Yeah, the and then lock there. that. Yes. Uh, I'm going to spend that lock, that's yep. for sure. Um, that's better. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so I am reinforced, so I'm going to take one less damage here. But that's one crit on the shields and one crit from the huge ship damage uh, deck. Oh, snap. We get to see it in action. So, uh, Max, since this was primarily your creation, I will allow you to draw. Oh, exciting. All right. So we got drive damage. So first of all, we find out if it, if it, if it was a precision shot. So to check if it was a precision shot, we check if I am attacking in the arc uh, that is relevant. Now in this case, you are that just is, barely outside of it. I am not, so it does not go off. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't resolve this top part. That only goes off if I'm in the right arc. So essentially, certain types of effects um, tend to be linked to attacking from certain directions. Mm -hmm. So you may actually want to decide, oh, I want to attack from the side to take out the turrets, or like I want to attack from the front. Uh, to do something else, or there's there are a couple cards that are on the bullseye. If you're in their bullseye arc, mm -hmm. you can resolve a really nasty effect where you blow up the bridge, essentially. Oh, nice. Um, but I do still get to hit you with Power Surge, uh, which is after you execute a maneuver, uh, lose one energy, plus one per ion token you have, and repair this card. Okay. And then I'm going to try to ionize you. So I'm going to spend one more energy, almost running myself out. So I have ten hull remaining here. And I'm going to fire the Ion Cannon Battery. All right, two hits. OK, two hits. Uh, my Reinforce, well, so your effect is going to go off. Yep, so you'll take another crit. OK. Uh, and one Ion. Evan, you draw this one. All right, all right, let's see what we got. Controls Disrupted is our precision shot. Yep. And Max is in my front arc. So you get a jam token. I get a jam token. That is going to remove my reinforced token. Ooh, nice. Uh, and interestingly, uh, some people have asked this, who decides which one uh, gets removed if there's multiples? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure the answer is the person resolving the, the person effect. Resolving the effect. So you get yep. the jam off my reinforce. Perfect. Uh, and then a panicked crew. Okay. I uh, cannot gain green tokens or perform the coordinator jam action. It takes an action to repair that card. Yeah. Well, those two crits are pretty devastating. And then you're going to apply a bunch of ion to me. Uh, I think I'm going to only apply one ion to you, unfortunately. Uh, you're still reinforced. So you suffer one crit, and then you take one ion. Because I only rolled two, two hits. But that effect resolved oh, before you... the reinforce had the chance to oh, apply. Okay. Yeah. So you're going you're to apply two to me. All right. We'll have two ion then. So that's going to drain okay. two more of your energy. Yeah, so that is going to... I have zero shields and I have zero energy. Oh. If, you had, if you'd been able to stack extra ion on me, my power surge would have um, eaten away even more next round. Hmm. Okay. All right. And that's just about the end of the round, That's right? a round, uh, yeah. Or th this guy, this poor fellow, he's uh, uh, in the atmosphere. Oh, He is. So, he's so that he, he cleared the a stress, uh, okay. so he's just going to get another stress. Uh, that sheath of is going to get stressed stress Yeah, too. stress him up. All right. Well, there we have the end of the round. So hopefully that gave you guys a bit of a taste of huge ships, how they work in second edition, the Epic Battles expansion. Uh, we will hold off on showing some of the other ship cards for some of the previews and stuff that are coming up really soon. Uh, I've already seen those, so those should be posted on the website in the next two or three weeks here. Uh, and you'll get to see more of the other huge ships and what they bring to the game. So uh, 
let's see, they want to see, I think, the template here. Sure. Uh, so if, let's show the empty base of the, uh, yes. well, not the ship, they don't care about that. They're yes. like, show us the base. So we were moving straight, generally. Yeah. Um, so if we're moving straight, you yeah. line up middle to middle. Hold on, Max. Hold on, Max. Thank you. <laughs> so, go right there so everybody can see how this base works. Perfect. So for moving straight, it's nice and easy. Yeah. You can move middle to middle. You can actually move front to front or back to back if you want to. It's all the same distance. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not moving front to back mm -hmm. or back to front. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, you know, you move middle to middle of where you want to go. So if you're doing four, be there. That's the straight. That's nice and easy. The cool part, you want to show this off, Brooks? Sure. So, um, you can, see, I don't know how well you can see on the camera, but there is a ridge of plastic here on the inside of the base instead of it. So, from the top, um, the edge of the plastic is right there. When I put the movement tool in, it slides underneath the base. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I can, f I have enough width there that I can tell when it is flat and at a 45 degree angle going out. Slide it all the way forward and it'll fit in very nicely. I, I'm, I'm applying pressure to try and pull this back and I can't because I'm holding the base down in place. Uh, then when I do a bank, I'm going to pivot about that point. Mm -hmm. So that's a zero speed bank. I can slide forward for one speed bank. I can step up to here for a two speed bank and up to here for a three-speed bank. And the reason it has that stepped motion is so that you're not quite fishtailing so badly. Right. Because if it was just a hook, if this was yeah. just like that, you would be yeah, that's throwing like, that back here. That's a Tokyo ship. drift right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so this is, this is uh, yeah, Frank's creation for how to make it move without quite so much fishtail. Yeah, absolutely. Dr. Frankenstein's Dr. monster. Frank Dr. Frankenstein's monster, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you everybody so much for watching. We have we stream new stuff every Tuesday and Thursday. So subscribe, hit that bell so you're notified whenever we post new content. Uh, this coming Tuesday, we're gonna be showing off some Marvel Champions stuff. Uh, looking at the Captain. Captain America Hero Pack. Uh, in specifics, are showing off Captain America himself, some of the other cards from that pack, so that'll be pretty sweet if you're excited for that game. Uh, thanks to Carolina Game Tables for providing our wonderful table. Hopefully you're all excited about the Huge Ship Conversion Kit, Epic Battles multiplayer stuff that's coming in the next few months here. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We'll see you guys next time.